Hey, welcome to day two of the Santa Clara Biomed Device Show. We're just shooting a quick video because one of the questions we get all the time with the show is what is liquid metal? Well, it's a couple things. One is the name of our company, it's the name of the process, and it's the name of the metal that we have. And this is a zirconium-based alloy, and this is completely different than any other metal that you might be interested in or knowledgeable about. So let me give you a quick demo. People love this demo right here. This is liquid metal, a little plate of liquid metal. This is a liquid plate of titanium. And I'm gonna drop these two stainless steel balls. And the thing you're gonna notice right away is this is gonna bounce for much longer than titanium. And the reason for that is because this is amorphous metal. Amorphous metal means a random atomic grain structure that does not have grain boundaries. Every other metal is gonna have grain boundaries. It's just when metals go from a liquid state to a solid state, they form grain boundaries but not liquid metal. And when you get an amorphous metal, where you have a random atomic structure, you get all sorts of very, very unique properties. Um, for instance, this, this is a molding technology, and we use a modified die casting machine, just like you do aluminum die casting, except aluminum is very soft. When our part comes out, because of the atomic structure of the material, it's incredibly hard. Twice as strong as titanium, twice as, twice as strong as stainless steel, uh, 47 Rockwell hardness. So you get some really unique properties if you can figure out, which we've done, how to get this part amorphous at the solid state. Um, so let me, let me show you the same demo just in a different way. This is a titanium ring. And since this has grain boundaries, and I want you to know the grain boundaries equal weakness. So when I bend this, it something we call plastically deforming at the grain boundaries. Where with liquid metal ring, since it has no grain boundaries, it doesn't deform. And that's one of the reasons why this ball bounces longer over here. Because if you imagine my hands, if these are atoms, it's like on a crystalline structure, it literally atoms move out of the way, but they stay out of the way. They, they, they literally get deformed, just like that ring I showed you. Where with liquid metal, the atoms do move out of the way, but then they kind of snap back because they're very elastic, delivering more energy back up into that ball. So people ask us all the time, when would I use liquid metal versus other processes? So I'll start with a few of the sweet spot for liquid metal. One, if you need a high performance, high precision part that fits in the palm of your hand. So it's really a smaller part. We can't make really big parts with liquid metal. Um, if you have a probably, probably tens of thousands of parts per year is a requirement, just because it's a molding technology and there's, you know, set up cost with the mold. Um, if you had like a part like, I don't know, let's say a part like this, and you needed 20 of these parts, high precision, do this on a CNC machine, this is the best way. But when you start getting into the tens of thousands of parts, you can now do a molding technology, which is much more cost effective per part, but still hold the CNC tolerances. So I think that is the beauty of liquid metal. And we spent a lot of time and effort creating a design guide. If you have any questions, there'll be a link down below. Click on that to download the design guide. It'll teach you everything you ever want to know about liquid metal.